Leonid Zorin's play, A Warsaw Melody, is about love in the Soviet bloc. It's very popular in Russia, but until now has never been staged in the UK. But this month it's coming to the Arkola Theatre in East London. Alice Lanyardo asked director Oleg Mirochnikov into our studio and asked him what the play was all about. This is a play about the relationship between a Russian ex-soldier, uh, ex-officer, officer and a Polish girl who studies at the Moscow Conservatoire. The action takes place in 1946 in Moscow. So the play has been performed in more than 150 uh, cities in the Soviet Union and Russia and in more than 15 countries all over the world. It's a true Soviet-Russian classic. It's one of the greatest love story ever written. In, uh, in the Soviet Union. Is it well known in the West? It's been widely performed in France, uh, Belgium, Canada, the States, uh, but it's never been performed in the UK. So what we're doing, we're bringing in this wonderful play to the British audiences for the very first time. And why did you want to bring this particular play at this particular time? Well, firstly, I was looking for a two-hander, a play with two characters, because for our newly formed company, Belka Production, it was very important to start with something small scale. But also I was looking for a play which will have a universal appeal, which will be understood and appreciated both intellectually and emotionally by the audiences outside of Russia. And this play has all ingredients to do so. Not only it's beautifully well made as a piece of text, but also it has very strong emotional charge which by bypassing your mind hits you straight in your heart. Do you think Leonid Zorin is a name that's recognized in the UK? No, not at all. Uh, uh, this name might be recognized by students and admirers of the Russian literature and language because his son Andrei Zorin is a chair of uh, Russian in Oxford. So people might know him and subsequently know that he's a son of one of the greatest uh, Russian playwrights. Now, Alieg, you've been in the UK for some years now, but you're from Minsk originally. I understand you came over here in 1991. How did that happen? Well, I came actually in 1991 to Belgium, uh, where I've lived and uh, worked as an acting teacher for four years. How did it happen? Almost like in the play. I met a lovely Belgian girl. Uh, we fell in love. I met her in Minsk, you know, in a cafe in Minsk, you know, by accident. So, so, so she was studying Russian there. It was not planned. I mean, love sometimes hits you when you don't expect it. You know, again, you know, I make... Um, a reference to the play, you know, they meet at Conservatoire, our character Victor buys a ticket by accident and, and you know, and here he is sitting next to this lovely, beautiful girl and he got smitten straight away. So, so it could happen. And uh, during that time, we only had one choice is for me to move over to Belgium and be with her because it was very difficult for her to stay with me in the Soviet Union, then Soviet Union. But uh, sadly, you know, our story ended the same way as it ended in the play. So um, I decided to move to Great Britain, where I felt it would be more scope for me to develop my career as an acting coach, actor, and a director. And that was true, because uh, England is a wonderful country which appreciates Russian theatrical tradition. Here you don't need to hide that you're Russian, you can actually celebrate it. And are you Belarusian? No, I'm Russian. I was born in Minsk from uh, from the Russian parents. Uh, my mother is a Moscovite. It just happened for them to be living in, in Minsk. What about your, your life apart from putting on plays in the UK? You're also a coach, aren't you, and a teacher? Yes, I teach at the very prestigious uh, St. Martin's College of Art and Design. They have a center of performance there. And I teach um, acting in Vaktangov tradition. I also work as a dialogue and dialect coach on films. And um, in your actual coaching, you've coached some quite famous people lately, haven't you? Yes, absolutely. I've uh, worked on, a, on an American blockbuster, X-Men First Class, where I coached a great American actor, Kevin Bacon. It's interesting to say that in that film, one of the leading parts was played by my ex-student, Michael Fassbender, who is a very, very famous now all over the world. 
And most recently, I worked as an actor and a Russian advisor for World War Z, which is a, a big American blockbuster with Brad Pitt. How was that? It was fantastic. I mean, I didn't work with Brad Pitt directly, but I was in, in a few scenes with him. And, and it was just fascinating to see a true professional at work and just a lovely, sweet, very approachable man. So it was, uh, you know, it was a nice experience. So I had a little bit of experience working with Daniel Craig on a film, Defiance, which was released in 2006, 2007. That's what I want to develop more in the future, this kind of work. But you'd like to carry on putting on plays as well? Absolutely, absolutely. We are very serious uh, with Belka Productions. Uh, it's our first project. However, I've got a lot of ideas in the back in terms of um, unknown Russian plays and adaptations of some Russian novels. I also want to develop an educational a branch of our company. Over the years, I've been involved in research projects on Vaktangov technique. Vaktangov was one of the most influential disciples of Konstantin Stanislavski, and I'm sure your listeners will know who Stanislavski was. I would be very, very keen to disseminate my work on the Vaktangov technique through that educational branch of our company. I'd also like to ask you about your childhood in Minsk. You grew up in, in the city, is that correct? Yes. Do you miss anything about living in Belarus? I do miss, of course. It's, um, it's a wonderful country with very warm, hardworking, earnest people. You know, I miss my friends. I miss my parents. I miss my, uh, my Belarusian food. I miss uh, culture. I do go to Belarus a few times a year. I suppose I was thinking yeah. whether you still feel a connection, especially when things happened like the two young men who were executed the other day for the subway mm. robberies and the political situation that's quite tricky. And I, I wondered how that felt for you living here. I've always been outside the politics because I think that um, you could be an artist and investigate human life, human conditions, not necessarily being deeply involved in the politics. So I am, of course, aware of, of, of all news, but I've grown up not to, you know, not to be um, closely involved in dealing with this. So that's just my position in life. I prefer to deal with art and life and, and not, to, not to be engaged in these issues. That was Oleg Miroshnikov talking to Alice Lanyardo. You've been listening to The Voice of Russia. From me, Tim Eckert, and the rest of the team here in the heart of London, goodbye.